Superintendents. They have the word super in their name for a reason. They're more than just intendants. They're superintendents. That's why two brothers, both superintendents, decided to create the Superintendent Bowl. Both of us, me and my brother, are superintendents. This is my first year here at Grand Falls Royalty. I'm new to the position. Uh, we needed a team to play on our homecoming game. Uh, somebody backed out last minute, and I knew he was developing his program there for six-man football. So I said, hey man, I need somebody to play football with us. Brothers Brian and Albert Hernandez are both superintendents for schools in West Texas. Brian has been a superintendent at Grand Falls since late July, and Albert has been a superintendent for Big Springs Charter School at the Ed Broom campus for eight years. Since my brother's the superintendent and I'm the superintendent of Big Springs Charter School, um, I decided that we had to have a theme, and so I came up with the Super Intendant's Bowl. I just had a good little catch to it, so we ended up uh, calling it the Super Super Bowl, but it's the Superintendent Bowl now. The interesting points don't end at the fact that they're both superintendents. It's the inaugural season for six-man football in Bruin for Albert, where not only is he the superintendent, he's a coach too. My passion is being around the kids and helping them to develop them. When I became the superintendent at Big Springs, um, one of the things I asked my, my board was if they'd allow me a coach because, like I said, it's one of my passions. His high school will be making their debut against the experienced Cowboys of Grand Falls. This is a major test for the first timers. This six-man league is a fast-paced league, unlike football you might know. So when you look at 11-man football, you got a lot more players on the team. It can get a little confusing, you know, there's a high scoring game. And one of the biggest difference between 11 man and six man football is that with six man, before you can actually run the ball across the line of scrimmage, it's gotta be caught, it's gotta be touched twice. Um, every, every man is a, is a receiver, you know, they're all eligible for the ball and that was the biggest thing that I, I couldn't understand at first. Um, freaked me out a little bit, I'm still learning it. And the scary thing is you can get 45. That means if you or whoever you're playing against has 45 points or more than you do, the game is over. So that's, uh, that could be tough. Since it isn't a small town, our population of students is 142. That means this event is a big deal for the town. In fact, it seemed like the whole town was at the game. Even the pets. He could go all the way. Touchdown! Not a big school, 1A, six-man football, but there's been a lot of energy. We had a bonfire last night, the whole town came out. We had a parade today, whole the whole town came out and we're expecting a big crowd for tonight's homecoming game and tonight's season opener. The game isn't only a war between the brothers. It's also a way to give back to the community and try to limit violence off the field, especially with how things have been going in schools around Texas lately. The brothers grew up in Uvalde, so they've seen their share of unnecessary violence in their own hometown. What I do want to say is Brian and I are both from Uvalde. And uh, you know, we, we've lived there all our life and we grew up and, uh, in Uvalde and graduated from school there. You know, and it's, it's a hard thing for me just thinking about it, you know. Um, I knew those teachers. I used to work at Robb Elementary. Um, and, and so I walked those halls and, and uh, you know, we, we, we keep them in our hearts and our prayers every single day. You know, let people know that, that we're playing for Uvalde Strong today. You know, we do have some kids that uh, actually are on our team that live in Uvalde and, and they've, uh, they have uh, transferred over to our school. And so I know that tonight they're, you know, Uvalde is heavy on their hearts and they're playing for Uvalde as well. With all the violence off the field within our state recently, it's nice to see the kids just play a football game. And with that, away we go. Let's get this game kicked off as Grand Falls will get the ball first. Jaden Martinez, a guy we, who the coach said we should look out for, he gets a strong return. He eludes a couple tackles there and gets a nice first gain for them. Now the first official play of the game, Martinez gets the ball. He's the quarterback. He pitches it to Sebastian Marquez, and he has a lot of room. He eludes a tackle there, and is that a touchdown on the very first play? Yes, it is, as he gets to the end zone, putting the Cowboys up by eight in real quick. First ever possession for the Hawks results in a fumble, unfortunately, and that's recovered by Martinez, giving the Cowboys the ball once again. 
Now, next play, Aldolfo Rodriguez gets the ball, or is that Marshawn Lynch? He bumbles through the defense and gets a touchdown. What a run there from Aldolfo Rodriguez, putting the Cowboys up 16 to zero. Now, after our onside kickers are covered, the Cowboys get the ball back again, and it's pitched to Tristan Bryant, or is that Derek Henry, as he gets the guy off him, and he gets in for a touchdown. Great there play there from Tristan Bryant. It's now 22 to zero. Martinez gets the ball again, and he goes past all the defenders, and he gets in for another touchdown, up 28 to zero. Now, at the end of the game, a sweet moment here as disabled Nathan Gerardo gets the ball and he scores a touchdown. He's been bedridden for a while and he's been putting in the work and his only goal was to get a touchdown and he gets it there. And, and he's been doing great. He's been coming to practices, working, you know, working out, doing the best he can with these guys. He travels every game. Uh, his heart's in it, and he's been a very special part of our team. Finally, one last touchdown here as Alexis Perez gets the ball and puts the finishing touches on the game as Grand Falls win 48-0 in the second quarter. Remember, if an opponent goes up by 45, the game is over. So 48-0, the Cowboys, and the very first game, Forb Albert goes scoreless. You know, I knew we were coming into the game that we were going to be playing a pretty well, uh, well coached team. Coach McVay is, uh, he's been around for a long time and, and he knows what he's doing with these boys. And so I, I, I think I can learn a couple of things from him. From him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be calling him a little bit and uh, learning what some of the secrets are. I'm sure he won't tell me all, but that's okay. Well, I heard that there hasn't been a crowd this big until since 2008. And so it's wonderful to have all the fans out. It's wonderful to have all these people out. And so we're super excited to, to get that good crowd. We want to keep that, that spirit going throughout the year. And hopefully uh, with the win over the Hawks. Well, it was, our first, it was our first year, and I knew he was going to take it, but that's OK. Now we're one and one. I got him in basketball. He got me in football. Anyway. We're going to wait for next year and see what happens at the superintendent. Board. He's, he's, he's bringing the turkey to Thanksgiving. Well, so. yeah, yeah he will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it certainly was an event for the ages, and although this year was pretty easy, I'd expect next year's Superintendent Bowl won't be as much as a cakewalk for Grand Falls, as Coach Albert will likely come back with a vengeance. With News West 9, I'm Marcus Rising.